confused by the fact that two players on Eternity, three players actually have a Roughnecks tag, so uh, <laughs> I was like, it's Roughnecks, no it's not. But it's uh, Eternity versus Super Team EU Kappa. We are into the picks and bands. Very similar bands actually to most of the day. Yasuo banned out once again, Riven, Elise and Zig. So uh, nothing all that special yet in this picks and bands phase. Indeed. We've seen a lot of interesting picks today, Stress. We've also seen the, uh, well, the Yasuo actually being played rather than banned, which in was in both the top lane and the middle lane. So we might see something uh, even more different in the upcoming games, but this time it has been banned out. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, both of these teams just to discuss where they've come from. Eternity are an organization that have been around for a while and uh, have had many challenger teams as well in the European challenger scene. Super Team EU Kappa, however, normally would have gone under the name Random XDD, which some people might know from the Ranked Fives ladder. Now that is uh, now called Super Team EU Kappa, however, they are playing with a substitute of Yarrow on the side of Super Team EU down in that support role. Yeah, so Tudor we've seen in a couple of different teams. Uh, he was in the one of the English teams, which was, uh, oh, if I can remember correctly, it was British Tea Time, I think, or British yes, Coffee yeah. Time, yeah. And uh, for, for a while, Mozilla was, of course, in Reason Gaming. So it was kind of a conglomeration of a lot of different players. And as you mentioned, Eternity have a new roster every other week, so. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll... <laughs> wow, I wasn't quite going to say that, but uh, Eternity are a, a team that seem to breed quite a lot of talent, I think is, yeah, is a good indeed. way of putting it, that there are quite a few players that have played on Eternity that have gone on to better things, so... Well, I wasn't going to say that there. either. No, but, I, um... I meant like uh, LCS, <laughs> high level of challenger. I, I'm digging myself a hole now. I meant bigger things, perhaps. Anyway, so and we'll that move on to the... <laughs> <laughs> and now that I've dug a hole, it's time to announce our Twitter giveaway winner while we are waiting on a couple of picks here. Uh, yeah, there we go. Eternity have settled finally on Rengar, who has been picked up. So our Twitter giveaway, we were giving away uh, an Evo ZX headset. We do have five to give away this weekend. So our first winner is, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, is Lignum Silver. We'll be in contact with you about how to get your hands on that headset, but congratulations. You have won the first Evo ZX headset. We'll be giving away another one today and then three tomorrow. So make sure you join us later in our next Best of Three series where we'll be giving you the info of how to win yourself a creative Evo ZX headset. Now, what will we see out of Super Team Kappa? You can take their name into account by the fact that they're probably going to troll us on the picks and bands phase. So I don't expect to see Timo logged in here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be Super Team EU Kappa without a hover over Teemo or indeed Heimerdinger. <laughs> so we'll just wait until they actually settle on a legitimate champion. But Rengar is a champion who we've seen a lot of in the top lane. Uh, usually isn't picked if obviously Savannah or Dr. Mundo is open. Um, but it's just very difficult to push out. He offers a lot of burst if you build up him damage. He'll generally like to gank the middle lane at level 6. And then apart from that, he'll build tank and he'll like to split push. But he's just very difficult to play against at the moment. Locked in Evelyn have Super Team EU Kappa, who we saw the predictions coming into the preseason patch that Evelyn would be stronger with the changes to Vision. We saw that for a little bit and then Evelyn got banned out quite a lot. Teams started really to focus their play around shutting Evelyn down. So we've seen Evelyn uh, have great success. It just depends on how well Eternity can do uh, trying to spot out Evelyn as often as possible to really just try and get uh, a, a good enough read on her jungle pathing so that you can prepare for those ganks. Eternity on the other side will be looking to pick up Thresh. There are a couple of big picks available. Lucian still available, Sivir as well, and Jinx, who it looks like they're hovering over here. Yeah, Evelyn is a little bit of a risky pick, and I say that because if you do not get these early ganks off, then you don't transition well into the mid game because she kind of falls off at that point and then perks up towards the late game again. But Evelyn, if she goes for a gank, doesn't work out and dies, can work out horrifically because there's a lot of junglers who can capitalize on a jungler who is behind, specifically like Shivana, like Elise, and it makes it very difficult to catch up past that point. So Evelyn needs to get those early ganks to work, and as you just mentioned, if you get the correct read, then it makes it very difficult for Evelyn to do anything. Shoot up will lock in Lucian. As, uh, that will be his AD carry. And looks like that uh, the pairing of Shoot up and Yarrow, who, as I believe you did mention earlier, did play together on British Tea Time quite a while back. I wonder how their synergy will be on this one because uh, it's a little bit difficult to go straight back to 
dueling again with somebody that you've played a long time ago with. So uh, that'll be one interesting factor in this game. What do you Gwinsu is about to pick up? Yeah, we'll see if they can kind of get that out of their memory banks and uh, come back into how strong their bottom lane actually was in that in that UK team. So, Ginsu, um, I got confused because I thought that was like Gwinsu and uh, yeah, <laughs> but um, Strat guys of course did pick up the, the Jinx and have got that very solid bottom lane of Fresh and also the Jinx combination. So, Tudor picking in the Lucian. Um, Synergize is very good with every other support because he just trades off very efficiently with every other AD carry. So it doesn't uh, he doesn't need a support to complement him all that well, but Annie is already be being picked. Yeah, now we're looking for Eternity's final two pickups here. They know the jungler, they know the top lane out of reason, so they can't pick uh, they can't look for a counter pick in mid here, so they have to pick something that's gonna be consistent. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Gragas or Oriana, two of the more consistent mid laners. Very, uh, very safe to farm. Not really that much of a risky pick. So I wouldn't be surprised to see that. Gragas has been hovered over. And Vi in the jungle, perhaps. It looks like those will be the two pickups there. Yeah, so again, Gragas is something we see in the mid lane almost every game alongside uh, Oriana, if those are both open. And then uh, Renekton in the top lane against. Rengar is basically, if you have action in the early game, you can get a kill. If not, then they farm out till 40 minutes. So there's, they have the chance to literally do nothing. But by having that jungler, they might have the opportunity to kind of swing that one way or the other, especially with Evelyn being on the board. Yeah, and they had the hover over on LeBlanc. That's just, uh, just to keep in the minds of Eternity that LeBlanc is a champion that a couple of members of super team can play and again unsurprisingly vi gets picked on one side with the counter of kale open on the other now vi is not really a strong enough champion to first pick in this kind of scenario so there's no point in banning kale because you're not gonna first pick vi you're gonna first pick a rengar or a shivana or a mundo so that's why this kale is being left open as that counter pick and i think that's a very smart pickup here from super team yeah, indeed, and uh, I'm not surprised that they would lock that in at all. There we go, and I am a couple seconds behind as I am spectating over the stream, but we've got about a minute just to talk about these compositions. Yeah, we've got a little bit of time. Uh, it, it's not too surprising, as we said, to see that. Kale, Eve is a little bit more of a surprising pickup, but uh, it's a champion that has the place in the meta. And not quite as strong as Eve used to be, although with the vision changes, can get into lane, but you can see her coming if you ward around her camps, ward in the right places. Now, we're going to head to a very short... We're live with game number one between Super Team EU Kappa and Eternity Gaming in the Scan Invitational, powered by Netgear Be Quiet and Creative Sandblaster. This should be a very interesting series as both of these teams haven't been seen all that much in Challenger, and it looks like Eternity want to be the aggressive team to start this one out. Yeah, there's been a little couple change ups, and this time, indeed, as you mentioned, we've got Eternity pushing into this jungle. Uh, not actually the invade route we see too often from a lot of these teams, but this will be the one they're taking. Yero off to the side, and so is Exola. Now, Evelyn coming in from the backside, looking maybe to get that early war down again. I keep wanting to call them Roughnecks, but Eternity are just, <laughs> again, not able to do too much and didn't even get that ward out either. Yeah, although Ginsu has to be a little bit careful there. He is stealthed, but of course, being in close proximity to a member of Eternity would spell trouble for him. But uh, looks like neither team are going to be overly aggressive here. Warding out from Yellow is going to be in that bush, so they will force out the Red Trinket already. Yeah, not a bad trade, as uh, in fact they have gone for the Red Trinket first instead of going for the full lineup of those warding totems, which is something we do see from a lot of teams as shown by Super Team EU Kappa. So, everyone's going to go for a more standard start, and uh, Ginsu will just find himself up at red buff, and we'll have to start with the blue buff, which is something that not many junglers do, but Evelyn really needs the mana regeneration. Yeah, that mana regen is incredibly important, and also the cooldown reduction onto those hate spikes allows to clear earlier. Uh, a point about the trinkets, it, there's a few different schools of thoughts uh, on who should be buying the red trinket to start the game. Uh, a couple of players I've spoken to, predominantly junglers, have said jungle likes to have that early as you get good map control. There's more fluidity to having that if you can spot wards around the map, allows you to set up ganks. However, I've heard a couple of AD carries and supports 
actually talking about picking it up on the AD carry because in that bottom lane, if you can uh, red trinket out their ward, the AD carry can clear the ward very easily, and it means that you don't have to force your uh, support, especially if they're melee range, to come forward to clear a ward. So there are a few different strategies with the wards, and that talking about strategy, strategas gets taken very low in that bottom lane. Yeah, and if you had, had actually gone for the red trinket on Stratagas, he wouldn't be able to get anywhere near that ward, so not like that's a viable solution. But that's kind of chewed up on Lucian in a nutshell. Like, Lucian will trade against any other AD carrier very efficiently. One of the reasons why he's so good right now, and uh, it just means that they're going to have to play a little passively until they land that clutch hook. Yeah, and Yero's picked up the Doran shield to begin this game as opposed to the Ancient Coin. However, in the mid lane, Exile is under attack. Indeed, Ginsu from the side. However, Tarotos wants this kill. Body Slam picks up the first blood. Ginsu is still trading off. He will claim that kill. Red Buff is ticking down onto Ginsu onto 7 HP. Mowoff is keeping up the chase. He's got the Vault Breaker, not quite in range. Already utilized his flash. I don't think he can get in range. He definitely sees him. And oh. oh. Very close. Ginsu was trying to get the stealth back on, managed to get it, but was just being chased out in close proximity. So a two-for-one trade in favor of Eternity off a nice play there by Torados in the mid lane. And uh, just to finish that point in the bottom lane, that Doran shield is going to allow Yarrow and Chu to be a lot more confident in their trades, provided they don't get hooked, because they'll be able to take more damage. Yeah, and Mikey are already being ignited in the top lane from Mozilla, just exerting that dominance. And Moa looking for the next gank onto Exelan, knocks him back with the Vault Breaker, gets the Denting Blows. Charados lands uh, a very easy barrel roll and picks up another kill as Nikos in the bottom lane picks up the kill onto Chewed Up. Yarrow has been hooked away from his AD carry, and Stratagas retreats on very low HP. And it's so strange to see two kills already from a Vi in the jungle, and in fact three that uh, they were all involved with. And it's just so strange to see a Vi gank the same lane and get two kills both, uh, sorry, get a kill in both times, because Vi normally doesn't reach her peak in ganking until level six where you get Assault and Battery. But this early on, that's a great start for Eternity 4 and 1. Yeah, like Vi's upfront burst early game is massive, especially when you get like the damage spike at level 5 as well. You can basically just Fault Breaker, channel that, or uh, combo that in with the rest of the damage from your lane, and that sometimes is enough just to kill your lane opponent, as we've seen on Exelar. So that's put him 0 and 2 this early into the game. Actually, hasn't upset the uh, CS too much, but definitely has upset that lane with two kills on Gragas. Yeah, that's going to stall out Exila's ability to hit 6 and get that intervention. Uh, both mid laners are level 4, but uh, we'll have a look at the experience between the two. As you said, farming is uh, fairly close between them as well, but that's kind of a race to level 6. If Exile can hit level 6 and have that intervention available for the explosive cask attempt out of Gragas, he may just survive it. Indeed, and uh, in the bottom lane right now, that extra kill means they can be a little more aggressive, but I'm paying more attention to that top lane, because Ginsu is in the bush to get the stun down with Ruthless Predator, kill the Meek, and Ginsu gets himself a second kill. That's what they needed right there, that's going to allow them to have a little bit more confidence. I mean, when you drop four kills this early on into a game, you kind of dip your head a little bit, and you start to play without the confidence that you really need to take advantage of lane advantages, and uh, we'll see where the super team have now really uh, raised their heads once again as chat seem to be raising their cappers. <laughs> well, an unfortunate side effect is when they start talking about Super Team Kappa, it turns into Kappa. So, Exile <laughs> is just being uh, pushed around and Yero gets hooked as well. Nika's just knocks them back with the flay, but now Ginsu looking for even more blood. Stratagas is surely going to fall. Hate spikes come out and uh, the Lantern will just jump onto that fresh. And Ginsu's having a, a really good game so far. Tarotos gets a kill in that mid lane. Looked like he hit level 6 before Exile hit level 6, and that's the engage that we were expecting to go that way. Intervention wasn't available. Managed to dive the tower as well for it. But uh, looked like the kill got traded back by the tower aggro. Yeah, he died for his troubles, and as a result, they won't have Gragas to contest this dragon, so that will actually go to the super team, and that is exactly what they need. They're a kill down, but a dragon will more than offset that. Yeah, we'll give them a slight gold advantage, but this early on in the game, that's not all that much to talk about. Mouth is looking to go in one on three, but the members of Super Team EU are quite low. Yara will get a Sultan battery for that final damage there. That's another kill for Mauer. 
Yeah, I'm not entirely sure if the ultimate was perhaps necessary, but if he had this flash there, then maybe it was. Ginsu and uh, his ally of Tudor will get on out, but this will definitely mean that the blue buff is going to be taken away, which will hurt Kale. Yeah, that's going to give Kale a little bit more trouble in lane. One of the factors of Kale is uh, how often you can get that Righteous Fury off cooldown to allow her to farm at range. Blue buff's cooldown, uh, although it did get changed, actually has uh, reached a point where it's still able to let her have almost consistent uh, activation of that Righteous Fury E, uh, especially when you start to pick up a couple of items like a, a Codex. It really allows you to farm as often as possible in ranged mode and not force you to come forward in lane. Yeah, basically turns Kale into a ranged champion, which is always a good thing. And now with Ginsu just moving into that jungle, he's level 5 to that level 7 of Moa, but is trying to take this blue buff away from them. Turtles clearing up that pink ward, and Exile just trying to shove him away. I think they know exactly where Evelyn is because the collapse is coming out. Ginsu has smited that away. Mozilla just sitting at the side, and Mike Yar unable to react quite in time. And Turtles rests him just to clear up the, uh, clear up the mess in the jungle. So equally that will hurt Gragas a little bit, his cooldown reduction won't be quite as low as he would like it, but uh, nevertheless, as soon as he starts building further towards Adafine's Unholy Grail, he'll have the extra cooldown to be able to throw out those abilities more often. And uh, as we reach a slight lull in the game as both junglers do take the remaining jungle camps that are available, this is a very close game so far. Six kills to four doesn't quite tell the entire story because of that earlier dragon but the gold is slightly in favour of Eternity Gaming. Yeah, and it's nice that the kills are on Evelyn as well, because Evelyn typically has issues when you get to the mid-game and she hasn't had a good early game, because she just doesn't really have the kit. But now she's got some actually uh, itemization. that's fantastic. Moa finds himself Yara in the bottom lane, the Salt and Battery comes out, and the Vault Breaker gets you from the side for the counter in the game. Agony's Embrace comes down, and the Death Sentence will indeed, with Culling comes through, picks up one, Stratagast turns around, Flake comes across, that's another kill, Death Forge from Relentless Pursuit, double kill for Ginsu. And there's the partnership out of Chewed Up and Yarrow. They clearly have gotten right back to the zone. They knew exactly where they needed to be. And the culling hit solo target right the way along on Strategist. That's what you want out of the culling is that there's nothing there to disrupt it. They weren't in the minion waves. It was off to the side. And it meant that he got a full channel off for the damage. Did have to use E to just make sure he was in position for it. But that was a really nice set of kills there. And it results, I believe, in the turret going down in favor of Super Team EU Kappa. Yeah, and an early uh, bottom tower is fantastic for dragon control because there's no safe sanctuary of that tower to retreat to. It just makes it a little easier to pick up that objective. And especially when they have a brawly type of uh, setup, they'll want to be going for that dragon, if not for the dragon, but for the fight. Now, how will Eternity be able to answer this back? They have got good damage onto that mid lane turret, and we've talked time and time again at how important mid lane is for controlling your jungle in the areas around Baron and Dragon, but you mentioned with the bottom lane tower being down, that does give Dragon control over to Super Team EU. Dragon is not due up for at least another two minutes yet, so what will Super Team EU be able to do here with the access to rotate their lanes here? With that bottom tower down, there's not all that much need other than to stop the aggression from Eternity in that bottom lane for their duo pairing to go back down there, which they are. Yep, and uh, Mikey R and Mozilla both pop their ultimates in the top lane, but if Mozilla pops his, then Mikey R just kind of uses his and wanders away. But this could be the re-engage. Moaf has actually used Mikey R to bait him out, but Mozilla has just kind of wandered off. And it's very difficult to push either of these laners out of that lane. It's really weird to see Renekton not be able to push his lane opponent out. Uh, I mean, Mikey R has taken a lot of damage, but you saw just there, Mikey R manages to heal that one straight away gets himself back up above half health but Renekton was for so long known as a lane bully and so difficult to deal with up in that top lane that in this current meta you don't see as much Renekton he's still picked fairly often but it's not the 100% pick ban that we saw for a long time mm. with Renekton just a very interesting piece of this pre-season patch yeah, and it's because Rengar just has basically the same sustain, if not more, than Renekton. So yeah. it's just difficult for him to push him out, and indeed the same goes for Mundu and Shivana. So the Warden there is going to see out Yero, but he hasn't actually noticed Ginsu is in this lane. And uh, even though they know Yero is up to the top side, they're going to assume that something's happening, and Moloth is coming out to react. 
Yeah, and this could be a bit of an explosive 3v3, although they're there before five. Yeah, Tibbers has dropped down already, and surely Nikos will be falling, drags them into the box. That should be enough to keep him away from the rest of his team. One for zero trade, not super terrible. That is a really nice trade there for Super Team EU because Dragon is up in 30 seconds. This will give them the ability to get wards established around, although there's a bit of a trade there forced out the intervention from Kale in that mid lane. Oh, Ginsu found himself Mo up, and uh, that definitely is a 6 and 1 Ginsu who's doing a lot of damage. Exola pushing out Turados in the middle lane, but they have to be very aware of Evelyn. Evelyn is not someone you typically expect to be wandering in your jungle and 1v1ing you. That's what we were saying during the pregame, is they haven't really been able to establish wards to catch Evelyn on her rotations. Here comes Mozilla into the mid lane. Gary Crocodile has entered the fray, but it's not something they can go any closer onto. Moaf pushing forwards does not have the ultimate, but Mike Yar has popped his own. He doesn't quite get in range and just kind of appears in mid. Super team aren't ready to fight this. Tibbers is not available. There's still well over half of the cooldown still to go before they can use that for initiation. So they were just being careful that they didn't get caught in the counter engage. So good play out of Super Team, but it does mean that they end up sacrificing the dragon control. They will look to rotate down to contest this, but can they make it in time? This has put them in a very poor position for Dragon. The AD carry has gone back. The cooldowns are on cooldown. So it doesn't look like they're going to go anywhere near that. Not going to touch that with a barge pole and just go for their own buffs, which is probably going to be a little bit easier to, uh, to secure. I say that, but they've just cut their own vision and will potentially be contesters. And uh, as I say that, Eternity just back up. Yeah, Eternity uh, will look to rotate around to the middle lane. Ginsu is there, but he's 1v4 right now until Chewed Up can make it there. Ginsu takes the Assault and Battery, and that's a tower for Eternity. Yep, CC'd for days, and now uh, Mozilla actually comes in, might be taken down himself. Has been hooked by a fantastic death sentence from Nikos, but now Mikey R also just completely chunked from Exler and Chewed Up. So one for one trade, but the tower has fallen to Eternity. I have a feeling though, uh, Super Team will end up looking to take this middle tower. There's good wave clear from Gragas with that barrel, but uh, as the waves come in and in, if Super Team decide to stay there, they may be able to push it, but they feel like they've got too much in that bottom wave for a stack, so they will go and clear that one out for going the middle lane tower for now. Yep, so both of the top laners most likely going to go for the Sunfire Cape and just kind of bat away at each other until something happens, but nothing really will unless there's some intervention from another laner or indeed the junglers. And uh, Vi is 2, 1, and 2, so picking up the spe uh, Spectre's Cow and the Spirit of the Ancient Golem, so a more just conservative tanky build overall. Something we've seen all day is just how close all of these European teams are, and it really just comes down to the team fights. The European challenger scene is so very close between all of these teams, the gold is practically even between these two, and we've seen that during the day completely, and for, that's why we run tournaments like the, that. This, that's why Scan and uh, Creative Sound Blast and Netgear and Be Quiet have put on this tournament here for people just to see and for us to showcase how good the European challenger scene is right now. And uh, in this game, we were in a bit of a lull period, but the towers in the top lane are still standing. And that's something that's a little bit rare these days. Yeah, I'm very excited for this new season here, Stress, and especially because we have Ocelot's team up later, which should be very interesting. But uh, right now, we're sitting between Eternity and Super Team Kappa, and we are in the first game of this best of three. Now, Mozilla and Mikey are once again trading in the top lane, and uh, they just haven't really, really been able to shove all that much. You can see the Super Team EU Kappa are heading up towards this. This is what I was uh, expecting a little more out of them. They're pushing up now to try and clear through that turret, but it kind of opens up the mid lane for the rest of Eternity to head down. And it just looks like both teams are fairly split now across the map and very indecisive on where they're going. Oh, well, Rengos their prize, but they're going to find themselves Mowoff first as Mozilla looks to try and contest as Flash comes out. Mowoff pops himself over the wall, and at least they got a Flash out of that, but maybe not the kill they were fishing for. No, no Nami in this game. Off here, yeah. so no kills that anybody's fishing for, but no Mozilla might be in trouble here. Graves isn't in this game either. Uh, I know, <laughs> it's sad times, just so many puns to be made, but not the right champions. <laughs> Guess these players. We should give them a, a list of champions that are pun worthy that they yeah. can have in the games. But yeah. uh, I think they might get a bit get a bit mad. 
Perhaps, perhaps, but, uh, you know, this is all about the casters and our enjoyment, right? Of course, that's uh, that's the primary Kappa. reason we do this. Kappa. <laughs> oh, God, Meryl, raise your Kappa's chat, please. Anyway, um, <laughs> so... <laughs> Ginsu just finds himself high in the jungle. They're going to clear out these wards, and none of these pink wards have actually survived for very long in this game. I think it's something we can say here, stress. Yeah, that, it's something that uh, we see time. We see different things depending on the teams that are playing. Sometimes you'll see teams really focus heavily on clearing the wards out, including pink wards, which of course are visible. Sometimes you'll see pink wards stay around for a very long time if you can get the positioning right on them. But uh, they have been falling very quickly, and I think that's partly because Super Team EU Kappa know that how invited are in this game because Evelyn uh, is six and two, so they need to clear out those pink wards to really stop. Uh, eternity from being able to stem the flow of that aggression. So both of these teams have very solid team fights, and in fact, both really operate very well on the defensive because you want to disengage with Gragas or get themselves in a very good position where you can split them up, or you have a, a re engage or a disengage by like Agony's Embrace, and then you can use her as like a lightning rod with intervention. So, as we don't, not seeing too much happen, uh, the Timmons will be used on the single target, but because it's so long between each engagement, Flash is always going to be up. Flash will always be up. The turret now is down, however. That mid lane finally falls for Super Team EU Kappa. Will they convert this to anything extra? Because Dragon is up in one minute. Can they secure themselves uh, a team fight or at least lane pressure so that they can rotate around? They're getting pushed in fairly hard here in the mid lane by Eternity. And down in the bottom lane, shoot up isn't able to respond. The hook lands. Oh, lands on Yero. Intervention used on the support player. Nikos gets instantly blown up. Assault and the battery finally finishes off a Yero along with the uh, Super Mega Death Rocket. So one for one trade on the support under tower will again equalize the game. Yeah, equal all the time in this game is just, again, just showing just how much, how close these teams are to each other. And it, it's one of the great things about working in the European Challenger scene as Vinsu looks like he's found out Malif, but takes a cork straight to the face as uh, Jinx will throw out the zap. Yep, so Dragon spawning in five seconds will mean we'll see something happen. And... Uh... It should be a team fight. <laughs> so Dragon now spawning. <laughs> Both of these guys wailing away at the Dragon. The Core comes over the wall once again. Tarados is ready with his ultimate, which is off Ooh. cooldown. Oh, the steal from Moab. Does he have an escape plan? Well, he's, he's got uh, Nikos coming over the wall, so he should be running to his aid. But this is not really a fight that Super Team Kappa won. And Eternity have really good potential to steal here. They've got Vi who can go in and then flash back out if it were available. Of course, wasn't available then. Didn't actually require the exit. But on top of that, Turodos with the explosive cask has massive damage on that burst. They didn't require that either. They just pretty much ran in, stole it, and have run out. So uh, they have great steal potential. Didn't we even really need to use any of it. Yeah, they were just threatening enough by themselves to not even require their composition to save them. Gwinsu lands a perfect ultimate onto four. That's not Gwinsu, it's Ginsu who moves on to a second target. Huge barrel knocks back, chewed up, and the carry of uh, Exiler, and the rest of the team drop below 30% HP as Yero does desperately try to take down the ward and maybe going a little too close to the beast of Garagas. There's a slight problem in my mind here for Ginsu on that Evelyn, there's two different schools of thought on building Evelyn. You can either build her Spirit of the Ancient Golem and be tanky, or uh, Spirit of the Spectral Wraith and have extra damage. The problem with the Spectral Wraith build is you're relying entirely on the shield that comes out from Agony's Embrace to hit as many people to make you as tanky as possible to survive through the team fight. And I'm wondering whether following up with a DFG is going to be the right answer because unless they can survive through the burst, those six kills that have been given to Evelyn will go to waste because she'll take massive damage from the explosive cask. Their composition is kind of a spin on like the old uh, Evelyn Chen combination where you had the shield and you had the Agni's Embrace shield and you just ran into the team with full damage builds and just did as much as you could because you have to focus the Evelyn but she's been shielded by like a 2-3k shield which you can't do anything about. This time they have intervention to do that tool for them but because they've always been on the defensive it's usually someone getting caught, intervention going on them and then Evelyn using her ultimate to use that for survivability so they're never able to combo that together. 
together. So hopefully, if they're on the aggre uh, on the aggression, then they should be able to use uh, that combination. And Evelyn can build as much damage as he likes. <laughs> you again, top lane, Mozilla and Mikey are just going to sit there and, and trade against each other. Still surprising that those towers are still up at 22 minutes into the game. Neither one can shove each other out of lane. Super Team might be looking to do something about this again. Last time they tried, they got a little bit caught out trying to do it, but Ginsu has found himself in the lane. There is a pink ward in the river, so they just need to get the position here to be able to push through that tower to get that gold, but it's of even game state. Even on gold, even on towers, the kills slightly separated, but the dragons have equalized that. And this game uh, could be, we could be in for a long one. Yeah, and it hasn't quite hit the breaking point. Finally, my Kiar has been aggressed upon. We'll see if they have enough damage. He's going to pop his ultimate. He's also got full stack, so he'll be able to get the battle roar off for that extra healing. And indeed, just walks out of that gank like nothing even happens. So the longer this lane goes on, stress is going to be even harder and harder to push these guys out. It's just, this is preseason in a nutshell. It's so yeah. easy for teams to equalize the uh, any kind of disparity in gold or kills by getting objectives and really just farming and in holding the game to being a bit later it still requires a lot of team skill but really is a big departure from the early game 2v1s that we saw on the previous patch for most of season three where we had very fast games and fast pushing compositions yeah, it means if you get two equally matched teams, you can definitely get games like this where you'll eventually keep building up the tension until you get that one breaking point. And several times we have just seen games go on for 15 minutes with like two free kills and then a team fight and then the game ends because you can't push that far with the death timers. So we might see a full on team fight here, but last uh, the last couple team fights has literally resulted in one person dying. The first one is going to be Nikos and now it's a four versus five. The cunning comes across. Big Tib is on to four. And that does look like it's going to be the end of it. In fact, it won't be. Huge Gragas Barrel onto another five. Grinsu will surely drop. Yero has been healed up. Mozilla backs himself up again. And he will fall flash forward by Moav. And indeed, the ultimate has not been used just yet. Shutdown comes out. That's the clean ace. Five for one. Not quite clean. Slightly dirty, but they still got five <laughs> players. The ace that stepped in a puddle. It's uh, <laughs> a five for one trade. A massive Grag Assault. That was exactly what Torados was looking for, and that's exactly what I was talking about. Ginsu could not survive that damage. He bursted everything to kill Thresh, and then didn't have Agony's Embrace available. It was still about an eighth of its cooldown remaining when the fight kicked off. You can only intervention one person as well, and the massive damage out of Gragas. I believe he had that Rabidans before the fight as well, so just so, so much damage completely decimated the super team. Well, there's the breaking point stress, and uh, the Baron <laughs> has been picked up. A kill in the advantage, and Moaf is just chilling in the in the Baron pit. Oh, he gets out, and uh, didn't even need the Lantern to assist him to do so. So now that they have the Baron, they're going to pick up a uh, whole plethora of items and then look for some sort of push. Yeah, Gregus had picked that up a couple of minutes before that fight, and you can see just how much the chasing potential of Jinx at the tail end of that fight they got so many low that with the get excited passive, Jinx just kept refreshing that passive and getting the extra movement speed allowed them to just completely take out that top tower, take out the team and get the Baron. And that's a massive power play that has swung the game in favor of Eternity. Absolutely. And uh, right now they do uh, get ahead in terms of items as Moaf again looks for that steal, but doesn't quite have the combo right there. And indeed it wasn't there in time but Evelyn is still something they have to be wary of 7 3 and 2 huge amounts of damage onto the right person could be uh, or could spell the end of a team fight but I don't think Eternity have to be too worried about that in the next couple minutes now Eternity with that Baron what will they use that to get from the map here that's the important question is how well can you use the Baron buff of course we'll give you that extra team fighting potential and the regeneration so uh, with the inner towers being the towers remaining for super team how will eternity decide to split themselves up 
That is the question, and everyone has kind of fanned out right now, just so they can get that early warning sign that Eternity is going to make a play, then everyone will kind of converge on that location. Indeed, the thing has come down onto the middle lane, and they will just try and defend this with their lives. But Yarrow and uh, being fairly squishy and the tower being below 40% might mean they will just want to concede this. No, they aren't pushing in towards that middle lane, as you said, may choose to... Uh concede that tower it is very low so they have to be careful that uh, they don't just get engaged upon by eternity we've already seen Torados with one big gragas ultimate i wonder whether we'll see the same out of him they will just fall back from this turret yeah indeed and uh now that the outer turrets are also up we might see eternity just go to a different lane push it in look for another tower and especially with jinx as long as they have a couple seconds they should be able to take it before we see a super team eu kappa react but they can't really go for an inhibitor turret at this stage super team eu uh looking i'm wondering how they're gonna itemize here to try and stop uh eternity because that gragas ultimate is doing so much da so much damage that they really do need more magic resistance here and they haven't really been able to pick it up we don't see many defensive items on most of the members out of super team at all you can see deathfire grasp still alongside that spectral wraith no other items for uh evelyn and only a thousand gold on a person wouldn't be surprised to see perhaps a zonia's hourglass picked up or maybe even uh, a banshee's veil just something to survive a little bit longer in these fights it's very difficult to drop the Gracchus before he combos you as well, because it's not a champion where you can be like, okay, we nuke him down during the team fight, great. Taradars is most likely to use his ultimate very early on. We saw it later on because that was a very odd team fight at the top, but normally you'll see it towards the start of the fight, so you can't look for that focus before he's already used, expended it. And then we see a re-engage right here. Ginsu, they have now focused Taradars. He doesn't get a perfect ultimate this time around, and 1-0 will be the score lines. Mozilla is pushing very hard into that back line. Mikey Yard jumps right back in again. And the slam and combo from Moa picks up another double kill. Two for three. They're very slowly turning this one back around. Triple kill comes in for Exola, but should be shut down. The double kill from Mikey R. And that looked like a brilliant engage out of Super Team. They got the Tibbers down for the stun after the flash, but it just looks like Eternity have so much health with the itemizations they've got. They've got so much health and resistance to Sunfire Cape, the Spirit Visage, onto Rengar. And the Randuins alongside the Ancient Golem on Vi just makes them so difficult to kill that without the amount of damage coming out from Super Team to chunk through those two big tanks, there's no way of a prolonged fight like that going in the way of Super Team. Yeah, and that will turn into another turret as uh, neither a Baron or Dragon are on the board to really be contested. So again, going from strength to strength, Eternity are firmly ahead and in the lead with about a 7k advantage. I'm just going to have to see how Super Team do or act on the defensive right here, Stress. And that is the question. Is Super Team are a fairly new uh, team in this lineup. Of course, Yarrow is substituting in. Super Team did play uh, quite a lot of ranked 5 games they uh, ended up being placed very highly on the ladder and qualified for riot's challenger but i'm just wondering they haven't played in too many uh tournament uh style games when the pressure is on and if they don't get it right in this best of three they will be going out of the tournament so i'm wondering how super team eu will dig deep here to uh, try and come back into this one yeah, well, Renekton does offer a lot to a team fight, but later on, he just becomes a little more of a CC bot. He still offers some damage and will eventually grind you down, but it's not um, as scary as some of the other top players, such as Mundo and Shivana. That's one of the other reasons. He just, he's just kind of outclassed at the moment. Evelyn will start to uh, ramp up towards the later on to the game as well, so that's something they can look towards. And Kale is actually doing very well. Like, during these lost team fights, Exelo is still picking up kills. Cool, you can see the health on Mike Yao, just how tanky he is right now, and uh, it's so difficult that he's not the only one with that amount of health mouth as well. It's just so difficult to kill. You can see the um, the Seeker's Arm Guard has been picked up onto, Vi uh, onto Evelyn, sorry, and that will go towards the Zonia's Hourglass, but that's a long way off. Only 700 gold in the pockets of Evelyn, so still the 500 recipe cost and another nearly a thousand to be able to complete that. It's just going to be perhaps too little too late unless they can get that out very soon. 
So, Dragon and Baron are going to spawn at approximately the same time. The Dragon's going to spawn first, and uh, in fact, we do see Eternity trying to trap this one up. But it means if they did about it too long, both of these objectives would be live, and there is the potential for one of these teams to rush the Baron while the other is taking Dragon. But since this is going to instantly be taken by Eternity, it's not something they have to be too concerned with. Yeah, Eternity have taken down Dragon uncontested as... Uh... It looked like Super Team were perhaps thinking that they were around oh. the Baron. It it was not quite in range. That's uh, a little unfortunate on the red trinket. Yeah, they they popped down the pink uh, pink ward, so it didn't matter too much. But it meant that they couldn't go for the trap they really wanted, and they'll just have to back up once again. So the dragon has fallen for basically nothing, and now Baron is alive, and we will see the Baron dance, and it has to happen from Super Team Kappa, even though they do not want to really go outside of their base. Interestingly, there's a visual bug that the Baron buff animation has remained on Eternity. Uh, it is just a spectator bug. I wonder whether that's in the game as well, because that really will uh, <laughs> be a little tricky for Super Team to realize whether they've actually got the Baron or not. But it is just a spectator bug. They don't actually have the Baron buff on them anymore. That would really play with your mind, though. Uh, it's like, oh, Baron's like, wait, what? Because they've just already gone for the dragon. But they'll still go for this... Uh, this this dance and Mozilla's actually going to be the one who's going to stay a little further up because he's most tanky, easiest to get out of a dodgy situation and the rest of the team can recall, get some last items before they try and go for this fight. Oh, Eternity not quite landing the uh, the red trinket themselves on that one. Did drop a pink ward, just seems to be uh, the story of this game, not quite getting that red trinket yeah. on the spot for wards. Sometimes it's a little annoying because you know exactly where they're going to be, but it is ultimately a game of battleships. So sometimes you'll end up not <laughs> quite clipping it and it gets quite annoying. But either way, it's not going to be too much of an issue. And Torados will have seen that ward as it was placed down. Even though Eternity have the lead here in this game, they're not really able to accelerate it quite as, uh, as fast as they would like to. The potential for Super Team to really catch in the counter engage with the Annie ultimate out of Tibbers is a little bit too strong for Eternity to really go all in on. And you can see even pushing up in towards that middle lane Eternity, not quite sure on where to judge their power there. Yeah, it's it's a difficult situation mostly for Super Team EU Kappa because they don't necessarily want to go for a five on five team fight because time and time again, even when they've been in a better position, they have uh, actually come out worse for it. They will. Well, first off, jump onto Mozilla, but he's quite tanky, but not his backline is definitely not immediately exposed. Perfect ultimate comes in from Ginsu, jumps over the wall. He's no longer the target that they're looking for. The Excella instantly detonates after his ultimate is worn off. And, oh, the jump after, chewed up after he uses his Relentless Pursuit. Now Ginsu is back into the fight. Moa picks up the kill with Vault Breaker. Mozilla is finally dealt with Gracchus and returns to the rest of his team. Moa should bleed out here. Indeed he will. Chewed up is so very low, but he's able to lifesteal off Mikey R. The baller does not quite Connect and Yarrow and Mozilla are slowly grinding Mikey R down. He is actually very, very tanky, and Chudo cannot quite get in range. But this should be this very slow ace, as he has been locked up <laughs> underneath the turret. There's the ace from Annie. Annie picks up the ace. And there's the counter engage out from Super Team. It looked great for Eternity. They even managed to get the uh, assault and battery all the way through onto chewed up but he dragged Vi so far away and managed to survive that he just sat around in the back taking down as many members of Eternity as possible and the fact that chewed up survived on such low health turned that team fight in favor of Super Team EU because Mozilla did a great job of holding as many members of Eternity away from him as he managed to life seal and land as much damage as possible but he's perhaps overstayed with the recall because he gets hit by Zap and oh. there's the Super Mega Death Rocket to pick up the kill. 50 seconds on that death timer, and he's going to be in the death chamber for that long. This might be what they're looking for to pick up the Baron, and that would be disastrous for Super Team EU Kappa. And now, uh, as Eternity look to re establish control of this game, they head towards the Baron area. They should be able to clear that one out, and I'm not sure how much that uh, Super Team EU Kappa can contest this one. The only way in, really, 
is a flash in from Ginsu, so he has to come around the side, but already pink warded out is that area, so good zoning already from Eternity. Yeah, Mikey are already selfed up there. In fact, gonna just go for the team fight as five minutes before they know they'll win it. Exeter has already just tried to back himself up. They do have their cooldowns available. Intervention already used on top of Moab's assault and battery. Yarrow has been locked up by Nikos and also Mikey, who is still on the back line. Mozilla is so tanky, but with five men wailing on him, he should eventually die. Zap will land. Yarrow trying his best to zone him away. Might die for his troubles. In fact, he will. And Mozilla drops to the body slam of Tarados. And that, again, is an example of how Vi... It sh well, no, actually, it's not an example of how Vi into Kale should go. I uh, nearly got that very, very wrong as Eternity for the ones that picked that one up. Uh, despite Vi ultimate in Kale, Kale managed to die fairly quickly on from another big explosive cast from Torados. And that might even be the game here, is Eternity have all five members alive and only two members of Super Team remain. Yep, Ginsu has do dropped himself into Zonia's, but instantly taken down. Now they have the AD carry, but one versus five. It's not going to be what they're looking for. Ace comes in for Gragas. The Nexus turrets will drop, and that's GG. First game going to Eternity. And that was such a close game right up until that Baron play. And that is the end of game number one here between Eternity and Super Team EU. So we will be back with game number two very shortly, guys. Stick with us here on Ready Up TV for the Scan Invitational Winter EU.